greetings from uh, Iceland and uh, welcome to yet another vlog from this Icelandic adventure. This morning we started uh, off with our uh, two week long uh, road trip across Iceland and the first leg of this road trip is going to be a four hour drive to this sleepy fishing town uh, in the north of Iceland called Siglufjordor. Siglufjordor is going to be one of the three fishing towns of the North Iceland that we'll be exploring in the next three days. So buckle up and join us on this journey. The best way to travel Iceland is uh, by taking a self-drive. All these uh, well-publicized tourist hotspots across Iceland uh, that you see, yeah, they, I'm sure they must be beautiful, but the real gut, the meat of Iceland is in these drives. Because for the last four hours, this place has been surprising us every second, every turn of the road, every direction. drive and we finally hit our first pit stop of this road trip, Siglufjordor. Now when we are entering this town, we saw that the weather was this grey, dull and dead sort of weather and then we cruised through this town for like 5 minutes so we could uh, come at this spot which is like this nice vantage point to see this town and man, in those 5 minutes the weather has turned into this. From grey, dull and dead to 8k high dynamic range OLED sort of weather. <laughs> I guess that uh, sums it up about uh, Iceland's weather, right? It, it turns faster than a DJ's turntable. Hold me down this time. So Siglufjordor is a small town tucked away in a fjord between these two massive mountain ranges. Um, a fjord is basically what used to be a glacier but then the glacier melted away and left this water in its space. For a really small town such as this, it has uh, surprisingly a longer history and it's likely that people have been coming here for ages because of the potential for fishing. Like in the 17th century, people came here for shark fishing and then there would have been like a small patch of road with like five to six turf houses and that was it. This place is also prone to avalanches in the winter. so. These settlements had to be moved until they could find like a cozy spot and then that became the place where the rest of the town began to grow. Uh, Siglufjordor has had a bit of an independent streak simply because they have been isolated because of their geographical location, right? Like nobody could access this place even if they wanted to. So if they had to get here, there was no uh, land access. They had to come either by seaplanes or by boats. Uh, this is why it has a reputation amongst the Icelanders supposedly that it's a bit of a rebel town. More recently, uh, Siglufjordor has been connected to the rest of Iceland through the Arctic coastway and so Akureyri to Siglufjordor uh, there is a tunnel. Uh, because of that you have tourists coming in and some of the locals have also revived you know uh, the cafes, they've converted some of these buildings into restaurants and guest houses and something like that is important for a town like this to survive.
all these are supposedly not supposedly all these are restaurants all these, the the yellow blue there's a red building on the other side and <clears throat> they they not just restaurants they're like amongst the most happening restaurants right in in uh, in Siglo Fyodor yeah but then they they're only open half of the year or maybe even like one third of the year during the summer around the summer when the tourism industry you know is at its peak we are here during spring and uh, during spring they shut but uh, <coughs> if somebody is here during summer you should maybe try out these places a lot of uh, rave reviews online about these places Silvio Fiorador is much more sleepier than we thought. So the restaurants that we wanted to go to were shut because it's it's not summer yet. So we finally found one place which serves fish and chips, and we are here. And the place pretty much serves only fish and chips. Both me and Pooja are vegetarians, uh, and me especially, I am not a big fan of the way fish smells. I'm giving it a shot today. Let's see if I if if I like fish in this form. It's actually good, dude. There's no smell. I can build this. It's cooked well. Yeah, it's cooked well. Yes, and it, it's good. It's good in the sense like I, I'm, <laughs> I'm eating it because there's no other option right now. But uh, it's good. I I can eat it. I I didn't. It, it's not as bad as I expected it to be. See, you learn yeah. something new every day. <laughs> I love these colors, man. Yeah. No, all bright colored buildings. Like, see, look at this. I think they want to stand out against the snow. Huh? They do it deliberately because you need to see it in the snow. Today we are at the small town of uh, Olas Fjordor. Olas Fjordor because obviously it's next to a fjord. Olas Fjordor is the sister town of Siglo Fjordor, the town that we explored yesterday. And these towns are so close to each other that the same municipal body governs both these towns, and they're separated by a 10-minute long tunnel. streets of Olas Fjordor and uh, one of the things we found online when we were looking up this this town was that uh, a few years ago there was an artist residency which was held here and one of the artists she uh, spoke to the town's people and uh, decided to do up these uh, murals of trolls across buildings in the town and that represents the people who live in those buildings itself so today we thought uh, we do a little you know troll hunt of sorts let's see how many trolls we are able to spot well, you went to see a lawyer, told him I that's a raven on a walking so you know around here there are a lot of ravens have you noticed and they're huge like the polished version of indian crows so that's troll number three we have a girl with the beast Thanks a lot. I don't want to eat it because <laughs> hygiene. <Thanks a> lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's this one troll that's swimming through the thing, and I guess that's a swimming pool. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Still, I would forgive <laughs> you. No, Lanty has got me. <laughs> That's such an Indian thing to say, to all Aunty. Could try again. So they even have the name of the troll written down here. Start to get me, and it looks as if you're just about to win. We've uh, reached our seventh troll, and I think we're gonna stop here. Is that seventh or sixth? I think it's sixth or seventh. Seventh. I think it's the seventh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Seventh. Yeah. Yeah. So we are pretty pleased that our uh, visit to Trolls Peninsula has not gone uh, without spotting enough trolls, and we're gonna go onwards from here uh, and on to our next destination, which is going to be a little bustling town, again in the north of Iceland, and we'll see you there. We are in the third and the final pit stop in our Northern Iceland town hopping and we are in this uh, city called Akureyri and uh, Akureyri has a population of about 20,000 people and 20,000 is not a lot in most part of the world but uh, here in Iceland 20,000 is good enough to be considered a city. The plan today is just like the previous two towns, walk around, take the place in, visit a few museums, visit a church and then get some good food and chill. So right now we are at the oldest house in Akureyri called the Lagdals Hus, which was built somewhere around 1795. This house has seen the history of Akureyri and it has been actively a part of the history of Akureyri. Akureyri is at the uh, edge of a fjord and because the waters of the fjord are really calm, it's a perfect spot for a harbour. And this is the only piece of land between the Arctic and Iceland that could be used for trade. So this grew as a commercial centre and there were a lot of Danish merchants who came and settled down here. And they were the ones who built this house. Because there was a scarcity of uh, wood for the longest time, people didn't really demolish houses. They usually rebuild and repurpose their houses. And each house takes on like many different roles depending on what time or era it is in. In fact, speaking of uh, you know there not being a lot of wood available, in the 1830s, in this entire town of Akureyri, there were only two trees. And one of the trees you see is right behind us. So this tree is as old as the house. So this right here is like my dream car. Uh, I think it's a 65 or a 70 uh, Land Rover Defender. Someday if I can afford it and uh, more importantly if somebody is willing to sell it, I can get my hands on one of these. So. Brinya ice cream in Akureyri, which is one of the best and oldest ice cream joints in Akureyri. A vanilla ice cream with a caramel frosting and then there's gummy bears, there's candy and there's gems. Like this is, I, I just have such high expectations of this. Just the right texture. I'm just so happy looking at this. One more candidate to uh, purchase. It has a differential in the front wheel, dude. Did you see that? No, it, it is has not a... known. It's just hung up on the top. We're actually on the way to uh, Akureyri's main church. 
but uh, between the ice cream place and the church there is this botanical garden which uh, which a lot of people recommend so we thought we might as well go and check it out so that's what we're doing but then unfortunately it's spring so all the leaves are down the garden doesn't look as green as we expect it to be but you never know there might be surprises waiting for us inside so we decided to go in So this is a greenhouse where they keep, uh, where they grow a lot of plants. So I think they basically grow these plants and then propagate it throughout the garden, especially during summer when the weather is good. Shavan thinks there's only two kinds of flowers in the world, sunflowers and rose. He does not know that anything else exists. So I just read something interesting about this. Uh, this botanical garden apparently it was started in 1912 by the housewives of Akureyri. They wanted to beautify the city, and so they had received this one hectare of land from the the city municipal or whatever. And the women started this garden, and uh, eventually this garden became the first public park in Iceland. And in 1953, the city saw potential in it, and it took over the garden, and they converted it into a botanical uh, garden where they started growing all these fancy trees and flowers and. Uh, you know, fruits and whatnot. Like, uh, women power. <laughs> okay, we are right in front of uh, Akureyri Kirkya or uh, Akureyri Church. Kirkya meaning church, like the yeah. You can see it right behind me. This particular church was built by the exact same guy who built the Halsgrim Kirkya, which we found in Reykjavik. And you can also see the the basalt column uh, theme uh, all throughout the church. They appear very modern and uh, the architecture also is kind of modern and they're also much much younger right most of these churches at least this guy was uh, built in 1940 unfortunately we couldn't go inside because uh, google screwed us over it said that the church is going to be open till like seven o'clock but then when we came here it's it's kind of like five five thirty right now but it's closed like half an hour back we kind of broke our uh, camera lens and uh, there was a bit of a panic moment and we somehow figured to put it back together and uh, we went to that street called Hafna Street, but uh, it was not as long as we expected it to be. It was it was not crowded also, and most of the restaurants there they seemed like a bit of a tourist trap. So we decided to not eat there, and we found this other restaurant which is a little towards the I guess the north of Akureyri. So we headed there now to have our uh, early dinner. like this potato dish and uh, a mushroom based vegan pizza the potato is really good the pizza is i would give it like a 7 out of 10 it's, it's a good pizza not like great i'm still a big fan of uh, brick oven that's my number one pizza but the portions may be enough if it's not enough we'll go back home and uh, it's going to be another round of maggi uh, before we sleep what do you say coach that sounds so sad Okay people, if you have stuck around till now, then we are glad that you could stay with us uh, through this leg of the journey. Uh, we hope that you could uh, experience some of the wonder that we did uh, while we explored uh, these three charming little towns. Uh, now, tomorrow is going to be a new day in a fresh place and uh, we hope that Iceland continues to surprise us just like the way it has surprised us in the last three days. <laughs>